We are trying to sort out a situation almost basin, uh, that golf course area that tends to flood. Uh, there has been a search under Vigoy very quietly from 410 Advanced Jackson. They've been searching all the way down to almost basin for a report of three people swept away in floodwaters. Apparently one person ended up in almost basin and that person has been taken out of the water and has been able to uh, to uh, be be secured from the floodwaters. We're getting different reports on what that person has done and how that person ended up in the water and why. So we're trying to sort all this out. Apparently she's in one of those police vehicles right now and the police have taken her in and we are having some reports that she was in handcuffs when she was put in one of those vehicles. We are trying to find out what led up to this story. But again, there was a report early this morning uh, from uh, the San Antonio Fire Department that there was a report that three people were swept away and this was in the 410 area and that they were swept away all the way down to almost basin which again it, the reason it's a basin is that's where the floodwaters go and usually there's water over the golf course there and that indeed was the case this morning there's still water there um, they were located two of the people there was a third they were still searching for and we just got confirmation from the fire department that this third person, a woman, was found. She was taken out of the water, but now we're not exactly sure, but there appears to be some question as to whether she's been taken into custody or not, or whether just taken to safety. So we are going to um, put all this together and we'll have it for you on our website. We'll collect all the information we can from the police there on the scene at Olmos Basin and from the fire department as well. And uh, a lot going on today. As well, you hang, can, hang as on you one see. second, Mike, keep keep throwing that in the air because we just got a more word that the San Antonio oh. Fire Department said that that discussion we had about a woman who was put into a police car is not related at all to the search. So erase some of what we just told you, but we <laughs> there was a search underway in Almost Basin uh, and a report that two people were found. Uh, now, Mike, Onto your pizza throwing. Yes, trying to make a little bit of pizza here. We are going to talk about making pizza at home and a great, uh, not a new restaurant, but a new pizza oven right there. And David Wattel and Enzo are here from Bistro 9 Brasserie. And what is the secret to making good pizza at home? Do I have to do all this to it? I've probably put a hole in the dough. So. Well, yeah, I mean, not being afraid to play with it, I think, is, uh, um, is where you want to be. So uh, it's pretty simple. It's a few steps. It's cheap ingredients easy to do at home and you can practice over and over and the kids will have fun. Yeah, it's something good for fun for the kids to do and also you just cut that pizza up there right. and the big question is too, when you eat a piece of pizza, exactly how do you eat it? We're going to figure that one out coming up on SA Live. Never miss a story. Watch live or when you want. San Antonio's latest news and weather streaming free on KSAT TV. Okay, one last look at the radar here. We are tracking more activity that's now working into the Seguin area. Now some around downtown San Antonio. At the moment, this is all light and it's moving pretty swiftly. But uh, should we see any additional rainfall over those areas that saw rainfall this morning, there will be some more issues. We'll be here to watch it very closely. Again, flood warnings there for Leon Creek that go through this afternoon. Guys. Thank you, Justin. We'll keep an eye on it. Thank you for joining us for the KSAT 12 News at Noon. Mike's making pizzas. As long as he doesn't put pineapple on it, we're okay. Or barbecue sauce. You can put barbecue sauce on pizza, can't yeah, you? No. With, no. You know? No. So no, bar no pineapple and no barbecue sauce. Not Ooh. in my book. Might have limit his choices. We'll see what he does with it. SA Live starts right now. And today on SA Live, we head out to Hemisphere Park to see what a new urban winery is doing to make themselves more sustainable. Plus, this junior baker gives us a lesson in creme brulee, and we find out about a summer baking program for kids. And this real San Antonio has trained Spurs players and other professional athletes, and he can train you as well. Celebrate San Antonio. Coming to you live from historic Market Square. This is SA Live. No pineapple, uh, no, no, this way. No pineapple, no barbecue sauce on that. We've got some uh, mozzarella, a little bit of smoked salmon, and delivery, just set it right down right there. Thank you, my good man. And your tip is make sure you watch the show, Ted. 
Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Happy Tuesday on this rainy Tuesday. I'm Mike Osterhage. The Ona is going to be sampling a little bit of wine in a moment. But first of all, yes, we are talking about pizza here. And it is a restaurant that's been around for a long time, a French brasserie. And they've got this new wood fired pizza oven right out there. And oh my goodness. You know, this has been sped up a little bit, but those pizzas cook in just a couple of minutes. And here to tell us all about it, how to make the perfect pizza is David Wattel of Bistro 9 and Enzo, his sous chef today. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Well, hello, Mike. Okay, a French restaurant with pizza now. Well, uh, it's a brasserie, so brasserie really takes on uh, a European flair. Um, it, it's, a, it's a broader menu uh, classically in France, so I decided uh, that it would be the perfect addition on the, on the patio mm -hmm. after the pandemic. You know, uh, if you're tired of making cookies, make pizza now. Okay. Um, and I think it's, uh, a, I wanted to showcase it, uh, the pizzas because it's a great thing to do at home. Uh, it's not that complicated after all. Uh, the dough is uh, inexpensive to make and, and pretty simple, simple ingredients. And uh, you can make pizza for the whole family and, this is and have fun doing it. Do it on a Thursday night. You said make the dough, and it's really simple. You can find a million different recipes online and cut it up, let it sit in the fridge, and then you're all set to go for Friday, right? And you like sure. making your own pizzas too, right, Enzo? Right. Yep. I think, yeah, it's all about the ingredients you like on it. All right. Now, wood fired oven, most of us don't have that, obviously, but you've got an oven right there, and you can do that at home. You can sort of replicate it, right? Right. So the important thing is the heat that you get in a pizza oven. It's 900 degrees with the, the professional. I mean, you, you're going to have one for your backyard, too. But uh, if you don't have any of that, you, you get a, uh, a pizza stone from the store. Mm -hmm. uh, it should be should have that. Put it in the oven and crank the oven all the way, uh, all the way 500, 550, whatever it will go. You work on your dough, you do your topping. Let's see Mike do, uh, do a little something here. Okay. What do now the thing is too, you don't, I mean, you can take anything out of the fridge basically. There's no set recipe for a pizza, right? What's your exactly. favorite one? Pepperoni. Pepperoni, okay, and you also like that one too with salmon on there. We've got salmon and spinach and mozzarella. And you just came up with a new idea of making it in the shape of a fish. Yeah, look at that. So cut it up, and this is the thing where kids can have fun. You can make it uh, anything you want to, and you're going to put some smoked salmon on that one too, right? And you said the trick too is first of all, you got to stretch the dough out, make it thin, right? Right, so you want it thin, and the pizza oven it has to cook at the okay. same time on top and on the bottom. So your pizza stone is actually cooking, and the heat from your oven, the, the top and the bottom has to. So you want not too much, uh, not too much humidity. So in the okay. sauce, I mean, the oil is important. You start with oil, mostly on the edge. Okay, so uh, little, you don't need the center. Just a little bit of olive oil. But you'll here. get a little shiny and extra bubbles on the edge if oh, you okay. uh, if you oil it up. And uh, then if I'm doing sauce, and a lot of people like it's a lot of sauce, but if you're doing this, this has got to be very minimal, right? Right, right. So minimal on the sauce. So people are always tempted uh, more sauce, better, but no, not not in this case. Okay. You'll ruin the pizza if it's too wet. All right. So you want fairly dry, uh, fairly dry your ingredients. Because the whole point is, like you said, this is going to cook well in your oven a couple of minutes, but maybe Try five minutes at home or something, something like that. So, yes. and and that's the other thing too. It does not have to be perfect, right? Right. So I mean, you don't need too much at home to do it. You'll mm -hmm. have fun with the kids, and uh, uh, and it won't break the bank either because it's not something expensive. Now you you might be making a little bit of a mess, but right. you know if you don't want to make the mess, then you come and see us and we take care of that. But well, that's like you know you were saying earlier though. If you mess up the first one. You right. haven't really, you're not out there. Exactly. Much, right? it's, it's just dough. It's water and flour. A little bit of yeast. All right. Uh, so can yeah. you get pizzas to go at your place? So yes, of course, you can get uh, everything to go after the pandemic. We got used in, in, into, uh, just like uh, customers, we, we were forced to, uh, to try everything uh, for takeout. And so uh, we're pretty good at that now. And um, the pizzas just are fresh out of the oven. So it's just... Uh, it's like nothing else. So this is one of the more traditional ones, and I've got a little bit of Parmesan on here, some mozzarella, the light little olive oil, and some uh, some pepperoni. But, I mean, you even have, like we're talking about, smoked salmon, and then right. this is spinach puree. So that's spinach puree, same thing. I mean, uh, a little sauteed spinach uh, with uh -huh. a little garlic and uh, uh, just in the blender, basically, and just a little spinach puree makes that a little different twist. I mean, you could you could have zucchini you could mm -hmm. do i mean there's it's endless of what you 
you know, what you could do. And, and that's a nice thing, too. If you, and this would be a party, but like you said, Friday night for the family, and just lay out all the ingredients like this, everybody gets to make their own. You don't sure. fight over, you know, extra exactly. cheese or oh, anything I want like one that, of these. Right? It's like, well, go ahead, have at it. And four minutes later or five minutes, it'll be out of your oven, just fresh out of the oven, and uh, get a slice of it, save it for tomorrow, whatever. But you can make 10 pizzas for $20 probably, you know, as far as cost-wise. That's fantastic. I mean... Uh, okay. And your favorite pizza? Yes. I, you know, I, I'm more of the salty guy, so yes, uh, anchovies, capers, olives, uh, the Napolitan, the you know, classic Napolitan style, that would, be, uh, that would be my favorite stuff. And David and Ursula were talking about uh, no pineapple, no pineapple. No pineapple no, no for pineapple. me, no. No pineapple. All right. and no cherries, no pineapple. <laughs> you're over there on Broadway. The address? It's 6106 Broadway. It's right by the fire station there on, the, on okay. Broadway. And if you'd like more information on Bistro 9 and order some of the delicious pizza, head over to salive.com and click on the As Seen on SA Live tab. So, of course, that then brings up not only just the toppings, but the big question is, how do you eat your pizza? We are not even going to talk about knives and forks because, the, you know, the diehard Italians would probably get mad at us or something like that. But do you fold it up? Do you eat it this end first? Do you eat it big end first? Have you ever tried this one, Enzo, going across first? Maybe once or twice. Yeah, uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. How do you like it? I, I like crust. You know, I like crust on bread. I like crusty bread. I like, you know, French crusty country bread. So I always eat the crust on my pizza. Mm. I don't think you know my, what? And I don't think mom pizza, likes the crust, but mom doesn't I think like the we do. Okay, that's delicious. And that's our Thank question you. for the day. How do you eat your pizza? Let us know. Sometimes you, you know, fold it up or something like that, or uh, just go for it and whatever it is it's really good so we'll go to Facebook and um, hopefully we'll get some of the answers a little bit later on in the show okay what goes better with pizza than wine and there is a place in Hemisphere Park that has uh, gone some through some recent some changes recently and uh, there's uh, you know, a new business down there Fiona is out there at rerouted 210 urban winery trying some of their Texas wines right now you have yeah, got the nice assignment today. I sure did, Mike. Okay, you got the pizza, but I've got the wine and the charcuterie. We'll get to all that in just a little bit. But having an urban winery at Hemisphere comes with many perks. And joining me to talk about those perks is the owner of Rerouted 210 Urban Winery and certified sommelier, Jennifer Beckman. Cheers. Cheers. Nice to have you in. This is such an incredible space. Very, Thank very you. cool to be here. And one of the most interesting things about this winery is that your wines are on tap. Yes. First wine in a box, now wine's on tap. Tell us why. Well, we have worked in the Texas wine industry for about 12 years. Uh, one of the things that really upset me was that we saw a lot of waste when going into bottle. And while many wines need to be in bottle for long-term aging, most don't. Uh, so we estimate that we cut our carbon footprint in glass use and waste by almost 65% when you factor in uh, being able to pour directly into glass from tap into samplers without having to just use that bottle as a wasted receptacle. Uh, we also serve our wines to go. Uh, we use traditional growler bottles, uh, much like a beer growler. They have a flip top tab. Uh -huh. They preserve the wine really indefinitely. They're airtight seals. Uh, so what we do is we just serve these bottles filled just as you would see. We tag them with our artwork and our label information. We offer our guests the opportunity to bring the wines back to us to receive a, a discount on their next refill. We do a 5% discount. When you bring the wines back, they're able to be fully sanitized and put back into reuse. So all sustainability, so even less guilt while you're enjoying your wine. And kind of walk us through, because these are all Texas wines, right? Absolutely. So uh, we currently carry uh, just about all Texas wines across the board, with a few exceptions of a few international wines, to show really the relationship between the grapes where they're most natively from and grapes here from Texas. Uh, we currently have seven wines under the rerouted label. Uh, our wines are all produced at a shared cellar in the Fredericksburg area called Slate Mill Wine Collective. Uh, we have two whites, one rosé, and then we have several wines here from other producers uh, featuring wines from Kuhlman Cellars in Fredericksburg, Vinovium Cellars, and uh, Wine for the People, which has a Dripping Springs tasting room. 
In addition to the wines, uh, we're able to carry several ciders. So we choose hard ciders that we think are more traditionally produced in a French style. Uh, Texas Keeper out of the Austin area is really one of our favorites to work with. They do dry style ciders that are really creatively done. So ranch rosé, there is a San Antonio rosé. Could we mm -hmm. try a rosé? Absolutely. See that? Okay, and you, um, you host events in this space, right? We do. We do anything from small semi-private uh, meet and greets or happy hours all the way up to full buyout events. We do classes, wine education, food and wine pairing classes, you name it. We really like to pair the, the education to be approachable and really be able to reach people at all levels and help people just love wine better in their everyday life. We like to make sure that they walk away feeling a little bit smarter, but you know, able, able to apply it to how they live. Okay, all right, I'm gonna taste this. Now, is Hemisphere open container? Hemisphere is open container, so uh, anywhere within the boundaries of Hemisphere, you can take wine to go. Uh, we have small wine to go glasses. Uh, they just pop apart. Oh, <laughs> look at that. We've even got lids, so uh, we just fill up. And? And you can take this down to the splash pad with the kids. Love it. All right, now coming up, we're going to be making one of their meat and cheese boards just ahead in the show. Thank Looking forward so to it. <laughs> I love that, that you can have wine to go right down there and just enjoy uh, Hemisphere Park. Don't be jealous, Mike. Don't I, be jealous. I am a little bit jealous, but um, I've got the good pizza here. So, you know, uh, you bring the wine, I'll bring the pizza. And we'll be all set. All right, Thank man. you very much. We're going to talk to you in just a couple of minutes. Once again, Fiona, if you'd like more information about uh, 210 Urban Winery, rerouted 210 Urban Winery, pardon me, go to salive.com and click on the As Seen on SA Live tab. All right, a little bit later on in the show, we get a closer look at what a local trainer's life has been like training professional athletes in San Antonio. And next, like I said, Fiona is back down there at rerouted 210 Urban Winery and making a cheese board to go with her wine. Yeah, a little bit damp down here in Market Square, but it is always beautiful down here. So while I finished up that delicious pizza, and of course Fiona's been enjoying her wine since she didn't have anything to go with it, now she's going to learn how to do a nice charcuterie and cheese board down there at a rerouted 210 Urban Winery. Now I'm really jealous, Fiona. <laughs> Take a look at this. Look at that charcuterie board set up with those wines. And with me again is owner of Rerouted 210 Urban Winery and certified sommelier, Jennifer Beckman. And, you know, we showed off that charcuterie board. What else kind of comes with it? So we wanted to put a focus on cheese that actually pair really well with wines. So really balancing that chemistry between things like salt and acidity, fat and tannins, all the components that we like on both sides. Uh, so we actually feature a couple cheeses. We have three cheeses and two meats. We slice all of our meat here on site to keep it really fresh. Uh, but the cheeses, we have a French triple cream cow's milk called Saint Angel. Each of these cheeses is paired with a little uh, hand-picked accoutrement. So we love honey on this cheese, drunken goat, which we serve with a pear and rosemary compote. And uh, we feature a local creamery because, again, we really like to support local artisans in Texas. Uh, so, so prosciutto salami, a little bit of prosciutto, marcona almonds, olives, everything that you can imagine between fatty and salty, everything that we love. And that's the great thing about coming here is you, of course, are a sommelier, so you really know your stuff. You can really tell folks what to pair with what yeah. that's going to give them the ultimate taste there in their mouth. You're lucky right? I'm that dedicated because <laughs> I've done the work for you. Yes. So. <laughs> okay, so we've got some cheese here. What are we, we're going to be cutting? Yeah, so we, okay. we slice our cheeses daily. Okay. Um, so everything going to the plate is fresh. Okay. Uh, what we're going to slice here is a local cheese uh, called Riverway Creamery. They're located up in shirts. They do really boutique, small production artisan cheeses. Uh, their quality is absolutely fin fantastic. Uh, not only to mention, this is a woman-owned business. Uh, <laughs> they're a woman-owned business. We love to support our sisters. So uh, we're going to take our wow. cheese cutting knife, which looks much more terrifying than it is. <laughs> and this being a salty, firmer cheese, uh, cheese okay. we want to make sure that we have a good grip. Okay. We're getting really clean cuts. Your tools need to be sharp. And what we're going to do is just cut a wedge off the bigger block. 
and just push down. Okay. And that knife has a little pet name here, right? Oh yeah, this is the chopper. The chopper. Yes, <laughs> um, big choppy and the chopper. Big choppy. Uh, <laughs> so if you want to give it a shot. Okay. Uh, once we have our, our cheese wedged, we uh, measure our slices. We cut into smaller, more bite-sized pizza pieces. Okay. Now you have, as you mentioned before, you have wine classes here, right? We do. Uh, we, again, we love to talk about wine in ways that make it really approachable to apply to your daily life. So we talk about food and wine pairing chemistry, keeping it just really fun and easy to approach with the food you actually really eat at home because I know I don't go home and eat a chef prepared meal every day. I eat potato chips, but <laughs> wine belongs with potato chips too. So <laughs> yes, yes, because of that salty. Exactly. So we oh. like to teach people how to make the right choices and, and what they do in their everyday life. So we, we can cater classes to any level of education, any format, any topic. Okay. So we like, we like to keep it fun and hands on. All right. Jennifer Beckman, thank you so much here at 210 Urban Winery at Hemisphere. For more information, all you have to do is head to our website, salive.com, and click on the As Seen on SA Live tab. I'm going to try some of that charcuterie board. You got it. Yeah, and tell me which what goes with the rosé. Oh, you're rosé goes to get with a big everything. doggy bag, <laughs> Fiona. Rosé, but let's start out here with uh, the yeah. donkey goat. All right. Oh, you're killing me. You know, it's uh -huh. great though to have an, another mm -hmm. place downtown to go for a, just a nice little light snack, glass of wine, and a nice little charcuterie board. Please save me some samples on that. And like Fiona said, if you'd like more information on uh, re. Uh, Rerouted 210 Urban Winery. Head over to SALive.com and click on the As Seen on SA Live tab. Okay, still ahead, Fiona and Jen get a lesson in creme brulee from a local kid baker. And get the smile you have always wanted with braces that you can finally afford. We are going to tell you how. That's next. Welcome back to SA Live. Well, if you're thinking about getting your kid braces this summer or maybe getting braces for yourself, you might have sticker shock on how expensive they can be, but one local dentist is cutting the cost for families, and that dentist is Dr. David Ferguson with Celebrate Dental. Good to see you, sir. Good Welcome seeing you, Mike. back inside here. Thank you. All right, why is this a really good time to get braces? Uh, a couple of reasons. One, obviously, um, if you still are wearing a mask, uh, it's a good time for braces because nobody will know you'll have them on. Okay. Uh, and, and if you're not wearing a mask anymore, it's a fantastic time because you might r be paying attention to that smile a little bit more. You realize, hey, I've seen myself on Zoom up close and that's what my teeth look like and, and now we're taking the mask off. So it's just a great time to, to get braces. And also $99 a month too. You can't beat that. Yeah, you really can't. I mean, and, and the truth is, I think a lot of people, everybody really wants a, a beautiful smile and a straight smile. You know, there's really uh, the biggest obstacle to people getting that is the, just the anxiety that comes with how much is it going to cost. You know? Right. And then also it is a big time commitment too, not only for the initial treatment, but then you have to have the follow-up visits. And that's where it comes in handy because you have uh, six locations and you just don't have nine to five hours. You've got hours that people can really work around, if you will. Yeah, there's really two ways to look at affordable, and that's one, you know, how affordable are the monthly payments, and two, is it convenient enough? If, if parents have to call off work and if kids have to get out of school, there's a lot of costs involved with that. And so what we've really tried to do is, is make it convenient for people and affordable. So we are open in the evenings. We have evening appointments. We are open on Saturday. Uh, so we've really tried to make it easy and affordable. Okay. Speaking of affordable, insurance, you accept that? It's an easy question to answer, Mike. Yeah, absolutely. We take any PPO insurance. So uh, if you have a, an insurance plan, yes, we take it. Uh, but it's also important to remember a lot of people don't have insurance. And I think the fear is, is that, hey, if I don't have insurance, can they still make it affordable? And the answer is yes. We have no down payment, uh, low monthly payment plans, like you said, that start at $99 a month. Yeah, because a lot of people, when it comes to even small dental work, but, but braces like that, they go, no, I, I, I can't. I mean, I'm not well, not even think about it, but like you said, you will put them in braces, right? Uh, you know, I want to make the commitment to all the viewers today. You know, if you're wondering, hey, can he really do what he says he can do and, and make it affordable? Just come in. You know, it's a free consultation. There's no obligation. And the only way that you're ever going to know is if you come see us. Uh, it'll either be myself or one of the other orthodontists in our group. Okay. And when you come in there, uh, what's it like the very first time? Because you could actually go in and then walk out with braces, right? 
You can. I mean, if you, if a patient comes in, we'll take all the records, the any x-rays that are needed, the photos. Like I said, there's no obligation and there's no cost for that appointment. But we're going to take all the records that we need and then we're going to sit down with somebody and answer really the most important questions, which are how long is this going to take and how much is it going to cost? At that point, uh, if the patient decides they want to get braces, we can put the braces on that day. It literally takes 30 minutes uh, to get the braces on and you're walking out well on your way to that gorgeous smile. And quickly, you said this is a good time for kids too because school is still a month, month and a half down the road, but now they can get used to the routine of taking care of braces and it's not another new thing to throw at them when school starts, right? Absolutely. It's just a good time. Uh, you know, you don't have to worry about the schedule and they can get ready for school uh, and not have to worry about that. Okay, Celebrate Dental has six locations in the San Antonio area. No credit check no money down and braces for 99 bucks a month. For more information, call 210-201-1696 or visit the website CelebrateDental.com. Dr. Ferguson, thank you. Good seeing you, sir. Good seeing you, Mike. All right. Get in shape like a Spurs player. This real San Antonio is a professional trainer and we learn more about his life training athletes a little bit later on in the show. And then Jen and Fiona get to decorate cupcakes and blowtorch creme brulee with a kid baker from the local summer baking course. Welcome back to SA Live. Jack Walker, Cakes Couture Jr. Baker is here to show us how it's done. Welcome. Thank you. <laughs> how old are you, Jack? I am 11 years old. Wow. Oh, oh, oh. So how long have you been baking? I've been baking for a few years now. I started when me and my mom used to watch baking shows all the time. <laughs> and one day I thought to myself, I want to do that. Wow. And then my mom told me one day about the Baking Academy and I wanted to join it so bad. And I joined it and the first day I was a little nervous because at that time I wasn't super big in baking. I didn't know that much and then I learned so much. I got done with the level one class and she brought me into the level two class with 16 to 18 year olds. And that oh was, my gosh. We can see why. Yeah. Yes. Look at this. Mm -hmm. What are we making? We are going to be topping creme brulee. Ooh, wow. That's amazing. Okay, that, you guide us through. That's okay. not an easy dessert. <laughs> All right. So uh, we are going to be getting one creme brulee and we're going to get our sugar and we're going to get about a pinch of sugar and we're going to just put it on top of ours. And we're going to need to get a good bit, but it depends on how you like yours. So the more you put, the more crystallized it's going to be on top. Ah. So it's always up to the person that's making it. So you can put a lot, you can put a little, it's always up to you. Okay. So now we're going to get our torch and about this high above it, okay. we're going to press it down and torch oh, it. Beautiful. We're going to want to keep it until it starts bubbling a little bit and we're going to get like a golden brown color. That's what we want. So we're going to get it like about that. So why did you choose this recipe? Why I chose do you like this it? recipe because I really enjoy doing this and I feel like it's sounds really complex but it's really not and it's a lot of fun to do and it can it can it sounds very fancy to make but it's really easy and very fun and i really enjoy it it's so very one of your favorite things to make yes then? it's yes. very it's very good okay so what's our next step and so our next step today i'm going to be showing y'all how to make a s'mores topping but today y'all can do whatever y'all would like okay. so first we're going to grab our graham crackers over here and put just how, however much you want. So you can put just a little bit or you can put a lot. So I'll put about that much and y'all can do. I as love much the as you little want. s'mores twist on mm -hmm. this. It makes it more like summer. <laughs> yes. Right? And it's like a kid's crumb. And with those, love it. you're going to put some. You know your audience. <laughs> those on top. You're going to put some of those on top. Okay. Do you want some? Sure. Thank you. <laughs> And you said your brother also cooks, right? Yes. He, he does more of the, a cooking uh -huh, aspect of and it. And you're the baker. Yes. That's really cool. Mom and dad are lucky, huh? <laughs> <laughs> so if someone's making creme brulee, what do they need to remember? You need to remember, so you're going to be cooking your creme brulee in water in the oven. So you're going to want to be checking it every once in a while so the water doesn't evaporate. So if it evaporates, you're going to want to refill that back up quickly and put it back in the oven because you don't want that water, there should be no water in it or it will kind of change how it comes out. So you're going to want to be careful about that. 
And then once you have all of that down and you can do whatever you want, you can toast Ooh, your marshmallows, you can put chocolate on it, which you have oh, right yes, over there. Has so that. You oh, I do. Top it off. Mm -hmm. Oh, I just saw that. And okay. then you're going to show us how to properly yes. do the piping on that. Okay, cookie. so on this today, we I'm going to show you how to do a nice summer style. Okay. So with this tip, it's going to be a rosette tip. And with piping bags, you don't want to have all of it. So you're just going to get a little bit at the bottom, twist it, and then you're going to go on the side of your cupcake. You're going to pipe a rosette. Beautiful. And then you could do that. And then now, after that, we're going to come over with this right here. And there's going to be a few empty spaces, and you're just going to want to pipe and then pull out. And you can make little flowers wherever you'd Beautiful. like. You'd Great only want to do about yeah. two, because you don't want to fill up all the space, because we're going to do lots of other colors of uh, other colors okay, i'm gonna let jack finish mm -hmm. this but there if you would like more information on the academy there with, with cakes couture head over to salive.com and click the as seen on sa live tab and we're going to continue here right jack okay it looks beautiful thank you so thank much you. you're welcome yes adam forecast all of this rain out there and he's going to be in later on to talk about more rain. Yeah, it's been a kind of a wet day. Welcome back, everyone. Well, Jason Eccles of Eccles Fitness Center is known for his 12 years of training Tim Duncan and helping him bounce back from that devastating loss to Miami back in 2013. The personal trainer uses a combination of martial arts and holistic training, but what you may not know is he's a proud San Antonian, representing the Alamo City through his positive vibes at his training center. And he visited us here back in May, and today, Jen Tobias Strusky features Eccles in our Real San Antonio in July. Take a look. Beautiful. Jason Good. Eccles takes his training very seriously, challenging NBA Hall of Famer and five-time world champion Tim Duncan off the court. There's a reason why he's trained him for 12 years. And when they lost the championship against the, uh, the Miami Heat um, due to one shot, they basically almost won that championship as well. And uh, Tim showed up with a fire I hadn't seen before, and he's always got a fire. So when he shows up with a bigger one, it's like, whoa. I started in an art called Taekwondo and then uh, evolved into an art called Kempo. And from Kempo, I was able to transition into boxing and Muay Thai. And from boxing and Muay Thai, I was able to get introduced into Dutch style kickboxing. Recently, he also worked with another San Antonio Spur legend, David Robinson. David Robinson. Uh, is probably the most profound spiritual influence that I've ever been graced uh, to have in my life. And uh, I've also been super blessed to know his family. And uh, his youngest son, Justin, has been an incredible product of the training here. Uh, during, uh, during a time of stillness and COVID, we were able to prepare him for battle. And uh, he got a phone call uh, to go over to Montenegro and start his professional basketball uh, training career based off of everything we were doing here. And that's what he was using as off-season training to keep him in shape. Eccles is rooted in San Antonio. And while he has a very successful fitness business, you have to scratch the surface to find out the motivation that lives inside him including being bullied as a child for being overweight. Going to the school that I went to, the weight started definitely being noticed by the other kids and they started to uh, insult uh, uh, verbally and it started to escalate as time went on. Uh, sixth grade, they were already starting to get pretty physical, uh, pushing, striking. And then as we got into junior high school, then they started all out trying to fight. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, punching in the face and the stomach, uh, tripping. Uh, there, was, there was a lot of crazy stuff and I was terrified of them, so there was nothing I could really do to defend myself. And I knew I lacked the physical strength and the, and the capability, though uh, it, it fired up a rage in my heart that um, I knew that, that I was going to make a decision as that young person that I would never uh, have to be in that position again for the rest of my life. And when he went off to Judson High School, it only got worse. Eccles lost his best friend, murdered by one of the school bullies. 
So I uh, started to lift weights in the gym mm -hmm. and uh, started increasing my strength and gaining knowledge and fitness. Today, the trainer continues to take pride in his facility, showcasing his martial arts skills using ice baths, water workouts, breathing techniques, along with his traditional martial arts training. Experiencing the death and the bullying and, and the, the trauma that I have definitely pushed me into an area to where I developed a mindset of not being able to quit. And it, it is the true reward I experience is uh, to, to look forward and see people 10 years later and they're already in a place of life to where they've used references from time with me to develop themselves and cultivate themselves. And I think that's what I'm supposed to be doing here. San Antonio is my home and uh, talking to someone like Tim, though he is Crucian and he's from St. Croix, he calls San Antonio his home. David Robinson calls San Antonio his home. Even some of the other big, big names uh, have all hung their hats here because there's something charming and beautiful. For SA Live, Cheers to wellness and health. I'm Jen Tobias Jeske. What a fantastic story. Well, if you'd like more information about Eccles Fitness, just head over to our website, salive.com, and click on the As Seen on SA Live tab. All right, next, I'm going to check out Caliber Auto Care's vehicle inspection service and see how it's helping their customers drive away safely. So you bring your vehicle in for the once over. Well, what exactly is the mechanic looking at? What's he finding? Well, you know what? Seeing is believing. And that's what a digital vehicle inspection is all about here at Caliber Auto Care. And in today's Try It Tuesday, I'm gonna learn all about that. with Nathan Prusky, who is the Vice President of Field Administration with Caliber Auto Care. And I'm, you know, expecting a torque wrench and a tiny Tools light Tools in my here. hand. So, yeah, you've got an iPad. How is this part of the whole inspection? So, we believe in trust through transparency. Let me tell you why. We recognize there's a public mistrust in mechanics. You take your car into a shop and you say, hey, I want you to look over my vehicle and make sure it's safe. And we give you this laundry list of things to fix. Mm -hmm. And you just have to trust your mechanic. Because you know about vehicles, but a lot of times we don't know anything about it. Absolutely. So we share all of our findings through a digital vehicle inspection. We take pictures of all the safety and maintenance items so you can see what we see. So check this out. This particular truck that we're under right now, as you can see here, we've got an oil leak. Right, and so this is the oil pan, and it has a gasket, and so this gasket is leaking oil. And what we'll do is we'll shoot a photo of that, and you'll be able to see exactly what we see in our picture, right? So we, okay, so instead of just taking your word for it, your proof is in proof in, in the photo. Proof. Okay. okay. You want to take a try at being a technician at Colorado Care for a minute? Yeah, this is the. Uh cleanest job I've ever done on a, a car here. So, all right, drive shaft, exhaust, looks pretty good here. Uh, Very good. Differential. Yes, sir. So, no. That's, there. Not, that's not doing good. So You are be, hired. You are be, hired. This is right. it. And all you do is just you, iPad. Yes, sir. I take a picture of this. Yep. Just like that. And this picture is showing your customer. Use photo. And this is the whole like laundry list of things that are done, and it's absolutely and completely transparent. And what's really cool is no matter what service you have performed, we do this digital vehicle inspection at no charge with every single service that we do. I, I encourage people if you're going to go on a road trip, if your loved one, if your family member, if your college students going off, if your high school students about to start driving, bring it to us no charge, we'll perform a digital vehicle inspection and you'll be able to see exactly what a trained mechanic sees. We're very competitive in pricing, so we will meet or beat any competitor's price at the end of the day. And what you'll see in complete transparency is a written estimate for the items that you have that may need or may not need to be done to your car. You will see all that. We even take pictures of things that are in good working condition, so you see that as well. So Nathan, any vehicle that comes in, it gets the once over and you take pictures of anything that's wrong and anything that's right. Absolutely, it's what sets us apart. Any make, any model, any repair, right? It doesn't matter what type of vehicle, what you need to have done to your vehicle, we can do it. Tires, brakes, alignments, mechanical repair, check engine lights, 
even our quick loop center, no matter what you bring it in for, you get a digital vehicle inspection. Additionally, a part of the Caliber family is Caliber Collision here in the San Antonio market. So literally, we've got all of your automotive service needs completely covered under the Caliber umbrella. And I was thinking I was going to be getting my hands dirty doing a digital vehicle inspection, but it all has to do with the uh, modern day stuff. And you can also take advantage of Independence Day savings with Caliber Auto Care. 25% off quick oil change, buy three tires, get one free on select tires, and a complimentary vehicle diagnostic with repairs. For more information and even more savings, visit CaliberAutoCare.com. No matter how you eat it, it's still pizza. It still tastes good. Thank you very much for joining us today. Hey, don't forget to stay tuned throughout the rest of the day and the evening for updates on all of this weather. Otherwise, stay dry and have a fantastic Tuesday.